Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this lecture is the anatomical lecture for the second grade of Medical College Iraqiya University. Uh, it is the continuity of the digestive system anatomy. We will talk today about the small intestine. Previously, we talked about the abdominal esophagus and the stomach. Today, we will talk about the small intestine, uh, which is uh, consists, uh, the small intestine consists of three parts. I have the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. The duodenum is the upper part of it. This is 25 centimeter in length. Then I have the jejunum, which represents two-fifths of its length. Then the distal ileum, which represents three-fifths of its length. When we talk about the small intestine anatomically, we say that it starts from the uh, pylorus, from the end of the pyloric of the stomach, until the ileocecal junction. This is the whole small intestine. Part of it, and the jejunum and the ileum, both of them are intraperitoneum and mobile in the uh, peritoneal cavity, while the duodenum has parts, most of it is fixed, and retroperitoneum, some parts of it are mobile, which we will uh, describe while we, uh, in the previous, in the coming uh, slides. Okay, when we talk about, and generally it is six meter in its length, to distinguish between each part anatomically, between the duodenum and the jejunum and the ileum, uh, the duodenum is C shape, it is a C shape, consists of four parts first, second, third, and fourth part. Then I have from the duodenal jejunal flexure starts the jejunum. The jejunum is known to have a wider caliber and more vascular supply, so it ap uh, appears pink in color, while the ileum will be narrower in caliber and pale in color and less vascular uh, supply. There is no demarcative line uh, to distinguish between the jejunum and ileum. ما عندي حد فاصل. يعني إحنا قلنا from the duodenal jejunal flexure يبدي الجيجنم. At the ileocecal junction ينتهي الإليم. البداية uh, بداية الدودينم من البايلورس. من نهاية البايلورس of the stomach يبدي عندنا الدودينم. Uh, بس كحد ما بين the uh, jejunum and ileum, I don't have a discriminative line, so we, I say it according. Two fifth is jejunum, three fifth is ileum. Two, the two fifth, the jejunum, lies in the upper left part of the abdomen, while the ileum lies in the lower right part of the abdomen. He chisir. In addition, when we come to the next slide, I have a very beautiful diagram uh, having points of discrimination to compare between uh, the jejunum and ileum, uh, both from inside and from outside to distinguish it anatomically speaking. Also, if we try to describe now each part, yes, we are trying to describe the uh, duodenum. If I try to describe the duodenum anatomically speaking, the length, uh, shape, it is C-shape. The length is 25 in centimeter. Um, it consists of four parts. If I talk which abdominal regions does it occupy, from this slide I can know it occupies both the epigastric and the umbilical region. If I want to know its part, I have the first part, I have the second part, third part, and this is the fourth part. The first part is the mobile part of it. It starts from the pylorus. The length of each part, the first part is 2 inches, the second part is 3 inches, the third part is 4 inches, and the fourth part is 1 inch. We 1 inch is equal to 2.5 cm. So the first part is five centimeter. The first two and a half centimeter of it is covered with peritoneum, is covered by the margin, by the right margin of the lesser omentum. And from above and from the margin of the greater omentum below. And this is the mobile part of the uh, duodenum. The second two and a half part of it is fixed. Okay, yeah, it's not covered by by peritoneum, sir. Only anteriorly. Then the second part of the uh, duodenum 
is retroperitoneal part, fixed, covered by peritoneum only anteriorly, except at a region where there is the presence of the transverse colon. يعني إذا سألك is it completely covered by peritoneum تقول لي no anteriorly تقول لي no أكو uh, line اللي هو the passage أو the presence of the transverse colon then the third part of the duodenum is also a fixed part retroperitoneal part covered by peritoneum only anteriorly except at the region where passage of the root of mesentery and the superior mesenteric vessels. فهمي أنا إذا سألك is it completely covered by peritoneum anteriorly? تقول لي no. There are two lines, one for the root of mesentery, one for the superior mesenteric vessel. Then I have the fourth part, اللي هو the smallest part, consists of two and a half centimeter, represents the duodenal flexure. How the flexure اللي مرفوع is it due to a suspensory muscle of the duodenum, which we will explain. In the next slide, من راح يطلع لنا راح يصير كلش واضح. Okay, this is the vertebral level of the duodenum. It starts from the first lumbar vertebrae. إحنا كنا عرفنا إنه the duodenum starts from the pylorus, and the pylorus of the stomach through it passes the transpyloric plane. The transpyloric plane اللي هو هذا. The upper horizontal plane, which is one of the main planes that divided the abdomen into the nine abdominal pelvic region. نحفظ سام transpyloric plane is at the level of L1. فهذا ال plane يعبر through the pylorus of the stomach إذا أسأل هو L1. يعبر through the first part of the duodenum إذا أسأل vertebral level راح يكون أيضا L1. Okay, so it starts from L1. Ends at the <coughs> ends at the superior duodenal flexure. Begins the second part of the duodenum from the superior duodenal flexure to the inferior duodenal uh, flexure. This is the second part of the duodenum uh, at the level of L2 to L3. Then I have the third part of the duodenum, which is at the lower border of L3. Then the fourth part of the duodenum will return back to the level of L2. Okay, so it starts L1, L2, L3, returning back to L2. This is the vertebral level of the duodenum. Previously, we mentioned that we have uh, terms called foregut, midgut, and hindgut. The duodenum is the site where the junction of both foregut and midgut is present. The foregut is the whole beginning of the digestive system until to the second part of the duodenum. In the second part of the duodenum, there is a site which is called the opening of a papillae, uh, of a, a duct. It's a more the major duodenal papillae. At this site, there is the junction of the foregut and the midgut. Yani what is above is the foregut, which is below is the midgut. The midgut continues, it will continue the midgut, including the jejunum and the ileum, the cecum, the ascending colon. The right two-third of the transverse colon is the midgut. Until its junction with the left third of the transverse colon, here will start the hindgut. We mean the descending colon, sigmoid rectum, and the anal canal. So, here we have the three uh, parts, which is the foregut, midgut, hindgut. It is very important because each gut of it has its own blood supply. The foregut, celiac trunk, is responsible for it. The midgut, superior mesenteric vessel, is responsible for it. The hindgut, the inferior mesenteric vessel, is responsible for it. So, this is very um, easily to, you will never forget uh, each organ who's the supply or each part of the digestive system, what is its blood supply. From this, from this, this, Now, through this picture, we can see the interior of the duodenum. Uh, as we can see here, from the interior of the duodenum, and this is the first part, 
this is the second part this is the third part and this is the fourth part of the duodenum خلينا على the first part of the duodenum we said it is 5 cm in length يعني احنا قلنا 2 inch inch ترى 2.5 cm فمعناها 5 cm if you can notice that it is a triangular شوية triangular يعني from inside وهذا نفسه تقدر تشوفه من يسوون skyogram يعني من يبيري ميل when we ask the patient ياخذ صبغة المعدة من ناخذ أشعة تذكر من قلنا انه بالمعدة راح نشوف the fluid air level فراح نسميه الفندس هذا هو the fundus of the stomach وبعدين عندنا ايضا this triangular part will be in صبغ وراح يسمى duodenal cap the duodenal cap represents the first part of the duodenum بعدين inside in the interior you will find these folds these folds are semicircular complete or incomplete circular folds permanent folds يعني even with distension it will not disappear it is called plica circularis or the other term of it is valves of Kirkrings خاف تجيك بالMCQ valves of Kirkrings or the plica circularis it is a number one cause of increasing the surface area of the small intestine in the small intestine I have several modifications to increase its surface area كنا نعرف ان small intestine a continuing of digestion and for absorption also so to increase the surface area number one I have the presence of the plica circularis is it present in the whole small intestine انتبه لها الملاحظة in the duodenum it appears and it starts to heavily impact whenever we reach downward يعني كل ما أني أجي من second part, third part, fourth part هي تبدي تتصفط أكثر وتظهر بعد أكثر in the jejunum it will be present very profusely in the jejunum in the ilium, in the first half of the ilium it will be present but in a less height in the distal half of the ilium, it starts to diminish and even disappear at the end. Face a smooth lumen from the inside. This is regarding the plica circularis. Are there other modifications? Yes, there is the villi and the microvilli. Each one of them, I طبعا villi and microvilli. The villi is responsible for the velvety appearance of the small intestine from inside. Who are responsible? للشعور الزغبي اللي يصير من الداخل uh, uh, للسمول انتستم uh, وصفها فيلاي ومايكرو فيلاي ندخل بتفاصيلها بالهيستولوجي لكن بليكا سيركولاريس is a modification that can be seen by our eyes so it is an anatomical description and it is also one of the points that we stand off to discriminate and uh, differentiate between the parts of the small intestine يعني أنا من يجيني part of the intestine وأشوف ما بي plica circularis أفكر بالterminal part of the ilium من يجيني part of the intestine heavily with uh, plica circularis أفكر إنه jejunum وأشوف الكاليبر ما تيكون wider وأشوف الكالر ما تيكون pinkish مثلا بينما بالدودينم uh, I will see it as a C shape with the presence of the plica circularis uh, coming close together uh, and packed together whenever we reach down from the first part to the fourth uh, part. Okay? Zim. Also, inside the interior of the uh, duodenum, in Tibet, I have an opening. This opening is the major duodenal papillae. The major duodenal papillae represents an opening for two ducts. هذا الأخضر اللي تشوفوا اللي هو نسميه the common bile duct اللي هو نازل من الليفر يحمل المادة الصفراء carrying bile and the other duct is called the pancreatic duct. This is the main pancreatic duct carrying the pancreatic enzymes مو هرمونز هرمونز مال البنكرياس تعبر خلال الدم لكن هذه carrying enzymes the exocrine uh, secretion of the pancreas, the two ducts will unite together at an ampulla, duodenal ampulla, opening in one opening called the major duodenal papillae. Okay, even this is covered by a smooth muscle fibers forming a sphincter 
which will be called the duodenal pancreatic sphincter, supplied by an autonomic nervous system to uh, res responsible for its uh, closure and its relaxation. The major duodenal papillae uh, lies eight to ten centimeter from the pylorus. This is important during endoscopy. When we do, when they do endoscopy. النظور اللي يسووا دائما يكون مرقم بسنتيمترات فوين يو ريتش تو ذا بايلورس تحسب اذا انت تريد تشوف الامبولا تريد تشوف الميجر دودينال بابيلي تحسب 8 10 سنتيمتر وصلت للسايت مالته اي هاف ذيس داكت ويتش از كولد ذا اكسيسري بانكرياتيك داكت يعني البنكرياس عنده ترى تو داكتس واحد من عندهم سمين نسميه ذا ميجر دودينال ذا مين عفوا مين بانكرياتيك داكت واحد من عندهم يكون رفيع نسميه the accessory pancreatic duct ليش موجودات هذني الاثنين embryologically لأنه embryologically البنكرياس أول ما يتكون ال الهيد بواحد والبدي بواحد وكل واحد من عندهم عنده duct وبعدين يلوفون سوية ويلتحمون مع بعضهم واللوفة مالتهم خلت the accessory pancreatic duct لي فوق والمين بنكرياتيك داكت اللي جوا خلت المين بنكرياتيك داكت تفتح بالميجر دودينال بابيلي 8 to 10 سنتيمتر from the pylorus while the accessory بنكرياتيك داكت will open into the minor دودينال بابيلي in also the second part of the دودينام it is here 6 to 8 سنتيمتر from the pylorus okay for these are two. The region of the major duodenal papillary, papillary, as I said, is the junction, is the line, the junction between the foregut above and the midgut uh, below. This is a full internal description of the duodenum. I will come into طبعاً, and I talked also about the peritoneal relations. يعني وضحت لك إنه the first part the first part is uh, uh, the mobile part. Uh, the first part is uh, the first two and a half centimeter and the second two and a half centimeter. Uh, and then we have the second, third part retroperitoneal, high peritoneal relations. We go to the fourth part. Shuf al sahda li sarat hna li hi an samiha the duodenal jejunal flexion. Who is responsible for this flexion? من هو المسؤول على أن سوالي هذا الفلكشر؟ The one who is responsible على هذه الصورة is called the ligament of treats or called the suspensory muscle of the duodenum. Okay, it is a band of striated muscle above, elastic band يكون in the middle, and a smooth part below. يعني تكون من skeletal part أو striated يسمي striated part above طبعا it arises from nearby the right cross of the diaphragm nearby the right margin of the esophagus it descends downward band like shape its contraction is responsible for the appearance of the duodenal flexure okay so it is called the ligament of treats جنن نجيبه بامتحانات العمل هواية and it is also called the suspensory uh, muscle of the ligament. Uh, the uh, suspensory, lig suspensory muscle of the duodenum. Sorry, of the duodenum. Okay. نرجع إلى هذه الصورة اللي موجودة. This figure internally he is trying to show you the differences between the three parts: the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. From internally, as I said, these folds are the plica circularis. They are permanent folds. يعني they do not disappear with distension. أكس تماما الروجاي of the stomach. الروجاي of the stomach اللي هي the folds, internal folds of the stomach. We said it is responsible for increasing the surface area of the stomach, but they are temporary. Temporary folds, it will disappear with distension. The plica circularis are permanent folds. Uh, it has no uh, relation to distension of the part. Uh, as you see, it appears uh, its appearance is in the duodenum, heavily impact in the duodenum. In the first half of the ileum, it starts to be sparse. Then, in the second half of the uh, of the ileum, it will 
disappear even completely disappear هذا فرق نمبر 1 فرق نمبر 2 هو هنا موضح لك هنا ترى هذه دودينال جلانز اللي هي البرونرز جلانز the only glands which are present uh, in the submucosal layer هذه هيستولوجي بينما uh, بالإليام there will be aggregation of the lymphoid follicles forming the pyrus patches also from it we can distinguish any pyrus patch is characteristic of the ilium. Brunner's gland is characteristic of the uh, duodenum. A tree-like, finger-like projection uh, is a characteristic uh, feature of the uh, duodenum. Okay? In this uh, diagram, uh, I show you how the two ducts, the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, united together at the duodenal ampulla. the ampulla of water. وهي هاي covered by the sphincter sphincter smooth muscle and opens at the major duodenal papillae okay this is another view هذه هنا هذه هي السفينكتر hepatopancreatic sphincter ها بما انه هذه هنا ظهرت لنا شوفوا uh, this is the lesser omentum ترى to the stomach lesser omentum the free margin of it the right free margin of it okay gives attachment to the first part of the duodenum to the first part of the duodenum ايضا طب طبعا راح نسمى ابيبلويك فورامن هنا موجوده راح نسميها ذني الدكت هذه احاول من نشرح البريتونيوم بعدين هنا لكتشر نحاول ندخل بتفاصيلها um, in this picture you can see how you will be examined uh, in the practical exam يعني بالامتحان العملي تجيك هيك صوره ترى مرقمه ممكن نسالك على الرقم اللي احنا نريده فهذه طلعتها حتى uh, تصير عندكم فكره عن الامتحانات العمليه من تصير بخير وسلام هذا الله خلانا طيبين اوكي this is a description about the suspensory uh, muscle of the duodenum هذه uh, هي ligament of a treats and how it is responsible for the duodenal uh, flexure. Okay, this is also uh, حتى نوضح لك إياها. شوف شوف هنا شون the third part of the duodenum is covered anteriorly by the peritoneum except except at the region where passage of the superior mesenteric vessel and the root of mesentery is a present. هذه هم أيضا. نيجي هنا the second part of the duodenum is covered by peritoneum except at strict region transversely for the transverse mesocolon. Okay, for the transverse mesocolon. Uh, I mentioned now uh, the period all that previously was an anatomical description about the duodenum with its peritoneal relations. Now we will come to the visceral relations for each part. We shown you the visceral relations of the duodenum. Yahud part part we call like anterior relation, posterior relation, medial and lateral. Ako fat sual jibna lil imtihan amali marra. Sa'elna fat sual ginna name. One organ, one, read only one organ, which has relation to the whole four parts of the duodenum. يعني من تجين على first part to the cre من ضمن الrelation, second part to the cre, third and fourth alien to the cre. So I'll give it to you as a homework. I wish that you will answer for me at, at the Google Classroom. جاوبني uh, only name one organ. One or let us in description when you can only name one organ that has a relation to the whole four parts of the duodenum. If you will read, you will catch it. It's very easy. Yeah, the organ is easy or it has a relation to the whole four parts. From the visceral relation, he will take each part, each part of the duodenum and mention the anterior and posterior relation of it. Uh, I will stand at some relations. يعني the first part of the duodenum, I like its relation to the gastrodudinal artery, which lies just posterior to it. Gastrodudinal artery. This is relation number one. هذا أحبه بالنسبة first part of the duodenum. When I come to uh, 
the second part of the duodenum, I have a relation of the transverse colon. I have a relation posterior limited mature to the kidney. Okay. When I come to the third part, the relations of the second part. When you come to the third part, anteriorly, I have a relation to the root of the mesentery and uh, to the superior mesenteric vessel, while posterior to it lies the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta with the uh, gonadal, ve uh, gonadal vessels موجود, and the stem, the beginning of the inferior mesenteric uh, artery. Okay, when I come to the fourth part of the duodenum, and if it relation to the diamond, I give a one, which is the sympathetic trunk. I go name uh, and uh, structure present behind the fourth part of the duodenum, which is the left sympathetic trunk, uh, represents uh, an important posterior uh, relation. Okay. These are the visceral relations. If you come to the blood supply of the duodenum, as I said, that it's the junction of the foregut and midgut. So both the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery will contribute to the blood supply of the uh, duodenum. I can say from the major duodenal papillae, what is above is supplied by the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. What is below the major duodenal papillae, yani midgut, it is supplied by the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. A superior pancreatic duodenal artery, the intaqari, it is yujimnil uh, gastro duodenal, yujimnil common, yani that it is celiac trunk, the common hepatic artery, the gastro duodenal artery, but the superior pancreatic duodenal artery divide into both anterior and posterior branches. Benaman inferior pancreatic duodenal artery is a branch from the superior mesenteric uh, artery. Is there a, a other blood supply? Yes, uh, twigs and uh, branches from the uh, gastroepipleuic artery or nearby branches, but these are the main blood supply. How the diagram was of the blood supply of the the, the venous drainage, the venous drainage is also uh, similar to it, and ultimately it will uh, will be drained into the portal uh, vein and into the superior mesenteric vein. This is an X-ray uh, radio anatomy. How the view of barium meal, okay? How the duodenal cap, which is the ahawl awasfa, or how the the duodenal cap trying to say that it is the first part of the uh, duodenum. This is uh, to show you the difference. يعني هيك نقدر نفرق نقول the upper left part is the duodenum. هاي طبعا احنا بعد ما خلصنا uh, ها طبعا الدوجينام lymphatic drainage نتبع خلينا نتبع the blood supply فنقول it is to both the celiac lymph nodes and the superior mesenteric lymph nodes. If we come to the nerve supply of the uh, duodenum, it is supplied by autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic, بعدنا متفقين إنه vagus يبقى مستمر. فال vagus هو parasympathetic بينما sympathetic is at the level of T9 to T11. T9 to T11. ويبقى نفس الموضوع. Sympathetic who are responsible for the sphincter constriction uh, motor يعني to the sphincters and inhibitory uh, to peristalsis بينما peristaltic movement is by the parasympathetic and uh, relaxation to the sphincters in the uh, When we come to describe the uh, jejunum and the ilium as we said two-fifth is the jejunum, three-fifth is the ilium, upper left uh, area is the jejunum, lower right is the uh, ilium. The caliber of the jejunum is wider, بينما the caliber of the ilium is narrower. The color of the jejunum is pink, بينما pale is the ilium. Uh, both of them are intraperitoneal uh, organs. Uh, they have a, uh, its own layer of peritoneum which is called the mesentery. And the mesentery is the, uh, is the term applied to the small intestine. يعني مثل ما قلنا الستومك عندي اومنتم هنا the mesentery is the uh, small intestine مختص فقط uh, للسمول intestine it arises from the root of mesentery 
هذا هو شايل لك كل اللي موجود نراويك هذا هو the root of the mesentery اوكي هو مصدر الميزنتري فيجي على شكل فان شيب and it covers the whole small intestine both the jejunum and ileum responsible for the mobility free mobility part of the small intestine within the peritoneal cavity اوكي وين We described, I think, from the first page, a little bit the internal structure of the duodenum. We also mentioned that precursorcularis. This is what we saw. We can see that it is very high packed. This is what I call the duodenum. We can see it smooth. This is what I call the ileum. Okay? Easy. We are going to look at this point. See, this is the mesentery. يعني اجى طبعا احنا كنا نعرف the mesentery comes to cover uh, the organ اللي موجود وبنفس الوقت it is responsible for uh, passage of uh, the vessels يعني conduit for the vessels ف if we come to look at the blood vessels يعني اللي موجودة between the jejunum and the ileum شوف الفرق اللي موجود the arcades arcades يعني هذه الحلقة اللي راح تصير Okay, the arcades of the jejunum are only meniji. You go. It is about two to three in number. It is the number of only two to three. For they will be appearance of windows. It will be like this. 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 The arcades of the ileum it is about yosal up to, يعني three to six in number. من تجع ال arcades صير هواي عددها. فلذلك راح يقول it has no windows. He will say that it has no windows. Okay. This is number one. In number two, اللي هي من ال blood vessel راح تطلع عندي هذه ال vessels. Which are called vasa recta. Recta يعني عدل. Vasa لي vessel. Vasa recta. So the vasa recta, لأنه the arcades هنا بالجوجنام is only two to three in number. So the vasa recta will be tall and long. مو يعني taller and few in number. بينما the vasa recta بالإليام لأنه the arcades هو يا they will be short and numerous. Short and numerous. سيج الوصف راح يكون. فهذه من تجين على الجدول بعدين هذا نفس الوصف اللي هسه قلته تقريبا اوكي شوف هنا 1 to 2 arcades او 2 to 3 arcades بينما انا راح اصير 3 to 6 او 3 to 4 arcades فالفازا ركتا راح تكون شورت والنيومراس بينما هنا الفازا ركتا راح تكون لونج اوكي هذه الفرق فمن تجي هذا نفس الشرح نفس الشرح اللي قلته هذا هو الجدول اللي اريد اذكره انه this is the anatomical differences between the jejunum and the ileum. If we come to the blood supply of the jejunum and ileum, both of them are supplied uh, by the jejunal and ileal branches of the superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery is the artery of the midgut, while jejunum ileum belongs to the midgut. The blood supply is by the jejunum and ileal branches of the superior mesenteric uh, artery. ال طبعا ال ال venous drainage will ultimately be to the portal vein هذه ال venous drainage ال lymphatic drainage نتبع ال artery so it will be towards the superior mesenteric lymph nodes ال nerve supply parasympathetic يبقى the vagus بينما sympathetic also level راح يكون T9 T to T11 نفس الشيء تقريبا نفس ال it do them T9 to T11, and who is responsible for the peristaltic movement? Who are parasympathetic? Who is responsible for the sphincteric control? Who are rahikun el el sympathetic? Parasympathetic for digestion, and the sympathetic is for the vaso motor and also for the sphincter motor. Okay. Thank you very much.